Welcome to this annual event of the Health for All Film Festival proposed by the World Deaf Organization. Let me give immediately a few information to our francophone and Spanish-speaking audience. Bienvenue à toutes et à tous pour cet événement annuel du Festival du Film Santé pour tous proposé par l'Organisation Mondiale de la Santé. Si vous nous rejoignez sur YouTube, je vous invite à vous connecter sur le site web qui s'indique ci-dessous en bas de l'écran où vous aurez une interprétation en français pendant quasiment la totalité du programme que nous vous proposons aujourd'hui. Now I am with my uh, colleague Lorena. We have a good physical distance of more than two meters. And uh, Lorena, would you say a few words in Spanish for our Spanish speaking audience, please? Thank you, Jill. Bienvenidos a todos a este evento anual del Festival de Cine Salud para Todos, propuesto por la Organización Mundial de la Salud. Si usted se acaba de unir con nosotros por medio de YouTube, recuerde que puede darle clic a este link abajo en nuestra descripción para unirse a nuestro sitio oficial del Festival de Cine, donde la transmisión será traducida al español en su mayoría. Muchísimas gracias y bienvenidos. Muchas gracias, Lorena. We have, in fact, a lot to share with you about the Film Festival and the rich program we are proposing today. But before, I would like to ask you a question, a simple question. Do you like to tell positive stories? Stories giving a good determination, giving some hope. If you're keen to do that, we have a game to propose to you through the day. And uh, we are going to explain the rules of the game at the end of this opening session. But in a couple of minutes, we'll uh, have a chance to listen to Dr. Tedros, the Director General of the World Health Organization, <laughs> Announcing the palmarès of winners. Stay tuned, the suspense is on. And before that, first we'd like to thank a lot of people. And first, huge thanks to the 1,200 candidates from 110 countries who have submitted their short films in our film festival this year. It's our second edition of the film festival, and we have almost the same quantity, the same number of entries as we had last year, despite of the COVID-19 pandemic this year. Lorena, do you have uh, some more information about these entries to give to us, please? <laughs> yes, of course, Jill. In fact, all of you shared so many great stories about health, from documentaries to fiction, through animation, music clips, we had so much great content to watch. And that's, this is why WHO Show is keen to maintain this film festival experience for our next edition next year, and we hope it, it will be an annual event from now on. So stay tuned. Remember that this festival is free of charge, so this is open to everyone. The idea of the festival is to give voice to communities, to health care workers, to all the activists and everyone that wants to share a story about health. Welcome. We also want to thank the public, of course, yourself, for being here to encourage all these uh, storytellers, because there's no storyteller, no motivation for storyteller if there's not an audience, of course. After the announcement of winners by the WHO Director General, we are going to share some of the comments that the public posted in the YouTube publications of our official selection of short films. Lorena? It is also crucial to thank hundreds of WHO staff members around the world that collaborated in this film festival adventure, because it has been an adventure for all of us. So people, uh, all the WHO staff members from regions and different countries around the world help us to uh, get to know this film festival everywhere. And this is why most of you have applied, thanks to all of these people promoting. And these people also help us to uh, find uh, the entries and to select what we are going to be watching today. Thank you. Yeah, indeed, uh, the, this film festival would not be possible without the dynamic participation of hundreds of colleagues and also the great implication of many WHO partners, institutional partners, and individual supporters from outside the WHO network. So thanks again to all of you for, for this participation, which is today the achievement that we are going to share. So now, this is the key moment. It's time to listen to Dr. Tedros, who announced our winning films to journalists on 13 May 2021 
for the second edition of the Hell for All Film Festival. Wherever you are in the world, I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, or a good evening. I'm delighted to be here today to announce the winners of the second WHO Health for All Film Festival. We launched this festival last year as the world was facing the shared threat of the COVID-19 pandemic. The lesson has been strong and clear. The only way to take on shared threats is to work together in solidarity. The WHO Health for All Film Festival was founded on the idea that solidarity starts with shared experience. The individuals and communities who are sharing their stories in this festival are shining a powerful light on the different ways that people around the world experience health and health care. Each film exposes its audience to new situations and different realities. They're building blocks for mutual understanding, respect, and empathy. In an extraordinary demonstration of creative energy and enthusiasm, the second edition of the film festival attracted nearly 1,200 short film submissions from 110 countries. The films are as diverse in topic as they are in style, ranging from documentaries to fictional stories to animations. Perhaps unsurprisingly, 40% of interest this year related to stories about the COVID-19 pandemic. The 56 shortlisted films have been sorted into categories that reflect WHO's major areas of work, universal health coverage, health emergencies, and better health and well-being. I would like to take this opportunity to thank WHO staff for the commitment and solidarity they have shown in bringing this film festival to life, spreading the word at the country and regional levels and helping with the initial shift of interest. In particular, I would like to thank my colleagues, Gilles Rebou and Lorena Bernal for their hard work and dedication in leading this process from start to finish, and they are the pioneers also. I would also like to thank the distinguished artists and activists who joined WHO experts to form this year's festival jury, Eugenio Derbez, Dr. Leila Hussein, Martin Fernando Jacobson, and Sonia Lohman, and Milisha Mimi Mimicilovic uh, and Vitika Yadav. Without further delay, it's time for me to announce the winners of the second edition of WHO's Health for All Film Festival. For each of the three main categories, there is a Grand Prix winner as well as a special mention from the jury. The winners will receive their trophies during our ceremonies tomorrow, which will be streamed on our website, YouTube channel, and Facebook. Each Grand Prix winner will receive a grant of 10,000 US dollars to invest in further audiovisual production on health. In addition, there are three special prizes a student-produced pro film, a health educational film aimed at youth, and a health equity film. Each special prize winner will receive a grant of 5,000 US dollars. I will start with those special prizes. The winner of the student film prize is Cephalia. Capturing the life of a young woman living near an oil field in Albania. It was directed by Kim Hygin from the Republic of Korea. Congratulations, Kim. 
The winner of the special prize for a health educational film for youth is Ifun, taking on the challenging topic of female genital mutilation. It was directed by Anita Abada from Nigeria. Congratulations, Anita. And the winner of the Health Equity Film Prize is The Beat of Change, Rheumatic Heart Disease, submitted by the World Health Federation and produced by BBC Story Works. It follows a young mother in Mozambique who has been diagnosed with rheumatic heart disease. Congratulations to all of you. Now I will move on to the special mentions and winners in each of the three main categories. First, the universal health coverage category. The special mention in this category goes to Chipatala Chapafoni, shining a light on the phone-based health service Chipatala Chap Chapafoni in Malawi. It was submitted and directed by Village Reach, an NGO in Malawi, and produced by Hope Nguira, Katilman, and Lindy von Neakrik. Many thanks to Village Reach for their participation. And the winner of the Grand Prix in the category of universal health coverage is the animated film Phosphorus, a beautiful tribute to the health workers in El Salvador saving lives during the COVID-19 pandemic. It was directed by Susana Beatriz Serrano, also from El Salvador. Felicitacio, Felic, Felicitaciones, Susana. <laughs> now on to the health emergencies category. The special mention goes to far away. Following health workers in Mongolia during the COVID-19 pandemic, it was directed by Batulga Gantulga of Mongolia. Uh, thank you, thank you, Butulga. And the winner of the Grand Prix in the health emergencies category goes to stressed a pandemic of fear. Exposing the alarming rise in stress levels amongst displaced children in the Middle East during the COVID-19 pandemic, filmed in Jordan and directed by Daniel Wheeler uh, from the United Kingdom. Many congratulations, Daniel. Our final category is better health and well-being. The special mention in this category goes to March. March follows French wheelchair user Grigory as he trains for a new career. It was directed by Vincent Hazard from France. Merci, Vincent. And finally, the winner of the Grand Prix in the Better Health and Wellbeing category goes to The Journey of Hope. The film tells the story of 10-year-old Sapna, who lives in Northwest India and travels eight hours every week to receive treatment for leukemia. It was directed by Jorik Dozi of the Netherlands and Sean Lin of Malaysia. Huge congratulations, Jorik and Sean. That concludes our list of winners and special mentions for this year. I would like once again to offer my warmest thanks to everyone who participated in this year's Health for All Film Festival, the 1,200 filmmakers who shared their work with us, the jury members who gave their time and expertise, and our WHO workforce across the world that made it all possible. Congratulations again to all the winners and special mentions. Thank you for taking us with you on these unforgettable journeys that give life to WHO's mission. Working in solidarity, we will create a healthier, fairer, 
and more resilient world for all. I thank you. Back to you, Christian. Thank you very much, Director General, and congratulations, of course, to all the winners and actually to all the participants. Now, this was the second Health for All um, festival with the experience from about 1,200 entries from, over 100, from about 110 countries, which is amazing. Will there be a third festival? This is uh, something new for WHO, of course. As you know, we develop guidelines and we, we develop some um, uh, materials, educational materials for health education and so on. Uh, and um, I remember some people find it a bit boring. Uh, to learn something, it doesn't need to be always, you know, a textbook or a guide or uh, a health education material, a leaflet and, 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 and so on. Um, that carries really, of course, the science and, 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 and so on. Of course, we will continue to do that. That's very important. But in addition to that, uh, telling the world, um, you know, about health in a different way. So, of course, we sh not just the CERT, um, I mean, CERT festival. Uh, our plan is uh, to uh, sustain it. Um, you know, to continue doing it um, for many, many more years to come. Uh, but not only that, this is one uh, side of art. Uh, there are many other, uh, you know, ways of, co of, of art also to uh, really uh, reach out to, to, to people at the end of the day. All the stories will be one to, for people to choose healthy lifestyles. Uh, second, when they have a problem, how to, to, to handle that. And then the third, when there is an outbreak or something, how do you understand that and what kind of role do you play? Because um, when outbreaks like the pandemics we have now, it's everybody's business. So it will touch almost all that we do from healthy lifestyle to uh, universal health coverage to emergency preparedness and, and, and response. Many thanks to Dr. Tedros and to several members of our jury team for this announcement. We will have during the coming hour several awards ceremonies during which winners will receive their trophies, of course, and it will be an occasion for you to discover their films and to listen to their dialogues with the jurors. We hope that this will inspire you for playing the game that we proposed at the beginning of this opening session. And I'm going to explain that more at the end of the session. Before doing so, let's share some portions of the feedback provided by the public about our official selection of short films. Lorena, could you please start by giving a few comments that we have copied from YouTube publications? Yes, we received so many comments, positive. This one is on the last mile, is the longest. It's a film about access to healthcare for tuberculosis in remote areas of Cambodia. Kendall Jones wrote, great film. This is such a huge problem across the world. And I truly hope videos like this help to raise awareness and help eliminate this disease. On this other film called How to Fly with Multiple Sclerosis, we have Kendall Jones also commenting a very positive story from Portugal. Francisco Babel wrote, as someone dealing with chronic disability, this gave me hope. Hope that I can be more than my condition. Hope that I'm not finished. Hope that I can become better. Hope that I am as big as my imagination and as alive as I dare to dream it. Thank you so much, Francisco. We have also Joao Villena, Villena Valerio. Sorry for the pronunciation, we are working on my Portuguese. It is a sensitive, thoughtful, and too provoking short movie. It looks Pedro Silva in the eyes, and the, despite this, his courageous pursuit of happiness as he skydives the Portuguese ski, uh, skies, it reminds us gently but surely that we are all born with equal and irreducible dignity and that life and time is of the essence. Jules, back to you. Thank you, yes. It's really great that uh, 
some of you like that shared uh, some comments and questions on the, the selection of films. And I invite you all to continue to do so because this official selection is going to be online for a number of weeks after this award ceremonies. Let me give you another, a few other comments that we received from the public. On a film called Inhale, Exhale and Draw, a very positive story also about the usage of art as a healing approach. It's told by a producer from USA, but everybody in the world could certainly uh, be inspired by, the, by this approach. So Michel Rondino Colozzino wrote a wonderful, wonderful told story about how drawing can ease anxiety. Thank you for making this movie. Another person, Esther Prince, wrote a poignant, inspiring story creatively told. I love the combination of the adult and child voices. Another film from India, The Invisible, Invisible Humans, is a documentary about elderly citizens, and especially who have been forced into obviation during the pandemic. Here we have a comment from Mudav Ubadaye. Sorry for our pronunciations and all your names. He wrote, Aaron Matthew, the producer, thank you for spreading awareness about elders. I am sure it will definitely light up the shadows. Thanks again. Lorena, would you please give us a few more comments from the public? Yes, so on Kwamuda, uh, which is a film that tells the story of a university student in Kenya who has no class due to COVID pandemic, we all have uh, some sort of impact in our lives. And he has to go and sell clean water in his neighborhood so that people wash their hands properly and for himself to have some income. For this uh, specific film, we, ha we got a comment from Givran Moiza, who says, let's keep on telling amazing stories that inspire and relight the candle of hope, both to our communities and the society at large. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Together we can do so much and overcome every obstacle. Thank you, Givran. There is another uh, comment on uh, this film called In Case of Emergency, COVID Story. This is an inside look in USA and the daily struggle of nurses working in emergency services. Chrissy Field Dog comments. This is a very, very impressive and thoughtful story about the day-to-day -day reality of the impact of COVID from ER nurses to the patients and impact to the community. On Moise's story, this is another film that is exploring how so many Zambian girls and women attempt to end unwanted pregnancies on their own. Kathy Bradford comment. Such an important story, and often one that is untold, which leads to dire consequences for girls and women. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cathy. Jill, back to you. We'll share more of these comments from the public in the other award ceremonies that we are going to watch after this opening session. Please have a look at the full agenda in our festival website, mentioning on screen below. For now, Let's explain the game based on this simple question. Do you like to tell positive stories? First, of course, a positive story could be based on a very sad and initially sad situation or challenging situation that you experienced, witnessed or imagined. While it would end, of course, with a constructive proposition, a determination for changing that, a strong hope that's what we would call a, a positive story in short. And if you have such stories to tell, Lorena will explain to you now how to play the game. So the game is quite simple. Uh, you just have to describe your story in the comments part on our YouTube of our Health for All Film Festival event. This will be open for all sessions during the day and it will be also open during the following weeks for all of you to write your stories. What's the idea? For you to be creative. If you have a, a positive story in, on your mind about universal health coverage, about health equity, about health emergencies, or about better health and well-being, 
you can just write your story in our comment section and after some weeks we will pick some of them to highlight them in our website and it could be source for inspiration for our next edition of the film festival. Be mindful that you could watch all these finalists and the official selection for each of the topics that I have uh, already described in order for you to familiarize on these global public health goals promoted by the World Health Organization. So you are super welcome to participate and bring all your creativity to this game. Many thanks, Lorena. I hope you'll be numerous to be inspired by this concept and by uh, all what you can discover in the coming hours through the various award ceremonies and dialogues between winners and jurors. See you soon for the next session dedicated to two, two awards the Grand Prix for Better Health and Well-Being and the Special Prize for an Health Educational Film for the Youth. When we wait for this session to start, we are going to play now a few of the short films selected and a couple of videos produced by the World Health Organization. See you soon! Angola entra em estado de emergência a partir das 0 horas da próxima sexta-feira devido à pandemia do coronavírus. Vai durar 15 dias até 11 de abril. O anúncio foi proferido pelo Presidente da Ao tossir ou espirrar, cubra o nariz e a boca com o lenço ou com o braço e não com as mãos. Há um conjunto de direitos fundamentais que estão, estarão dispensos no todo ou em parte, de acordo com regras específicas. São eles o direito à inviolabilidade. países pobres e sistemas de saúde debilitado preocupa especialistas. A maior parte em confinamento até pelo menos 10 de maio, uma decisão tomada perante a ameaça da pandemia da Covid-19, como esclarece o documento do Presidente da República. Foram registrados na Europa desde o início da pandemia em dezembro, somando mais de 92 mil mortos. Os casos de contágio já superam os 2 milhões 130 mil em todo o mundo. A França divulgou que na
ở miền trường ở đây nâng tiệt Cô ấy cả trường ở nâng mơ tơ về bậc bà Tập về đại nhóm ban châu nông là Anh ca operation nâng bạn nhóm đăng tiệt Anh cháu này ca đại nhóm hồ đại trường ở lúc bây nâng về chân Nhưng trong lúc bằng bạc trường ở nâng Lai chô mất Chô ấy tiếp Hi hu hi hu Đã sai Đã sai Chất đai đó là Ất đan nó đau nên Không hồ lăng Tì bầy đơ ngay Ất mê nhanh Ất ca Operation là xa nắng Cư chi Ất ca mỗi Chia ba tì Chị người rộp bề Đòi chọc chia ba Nại chị người Tam xã cung Tàu ăn mò Ất Nói cái nông không có lâu bản nhóm nắng để chấm lịch tập của mùi khai Từ chấm ngọt ca cho xeo chiều bản nhóm cứ nhóm thời ca phá tu Chấm nhóm cho hòa ca bê phật nó nhóm cho hòa ai thân âm nạ chừng ứ Bồi bị ai thân âm nạ chừng ứ hay cứ nhóm đau bằng mùi cầm hạ Đau bằng mùi cầm hạ vô mà đo lên một đô lấy bạn khi em chấp đam đa xèo chiều bật to tiệt hồ này chừng như bật to tiệt rồi con này sang say bật to ơi phố sợ hạ công nhung tầm khán phố đại xa phố tha chừng như nắng vía cho lon bờ sân chỉ dân ăn ban xèo chiều tới vía nắng cho lon say khi pin sọc pin phun ý con đòn môi đai nó nghe bạn con đòn môi đai nè Nè Sài nâng à? Chào bởi mình nó sai nâng hụt khẹp nhóm á Nè Chẳng khăn ông nè chừng ứ đại nơi khăn ông phung nâng khăn ông mà nẹ nâng bởi dương hụt khơn Ờ mà nẹ nâng dương ai ca phía ban mà lưu đại nơi chung vinh nâng chở nẹ Every 18 second to 20 second one person die of tuberculosis A disease that is treatable easily After 2015, uh, Cambodia is still one of the 30 high TB burden countries in the world. We provide treatment to the poorest of poor at their doorstep. We call it last mile delivery. Rốt xin nhá, rồi bỏ chừng người là bế anh miên Đôi chìa khó, trọ khổ lỗ Các đá ưu stên stên nhờ bế dục Ở trăm ngày, giờ bế ní dương chỗ tư Bà ở kia tư tinh dưới chân hả nè? Chà Ủa ấy chà, thân nằm dương xin rạp tư sụt Chà Thầy dương tâm bật tư kết ao dương khen lê bế nắc Nhông khen à xa Chân ở xong tất tích bàn nè Sự support from Operation Asha we deploy also new technology, so we are called e-compliant, whereby we can make the information from our patient to our lab and of course to our care provider. Bán cô rồi Vì là mình chung ngư được bên nông luôn nhầm mình ta phát phê cái khăn đây rồi Chung ngư nâng về cả xã hạ của khăn Dẹp về nhầm chư này thì nhầm xa rõ cái lô ọ phê cái lô chiên Đã ếch đoan mà hả chứ? Đoan mà hả? Vì là đây thì nhầm chư Cái lấy này dẹp bọt đại phật này Nói nâng Tình này thì khăn bụng này bất sân chia này chừng người nâng bắt đại sát ở lề thám cọt nâng bị cho mốc nâng chừng người bên nâng bị bọt tơ mốc ai nâng xoan thám đại sát đại cọt ngày lề thám nâng đã đăng thu cái anh đấy các bạn tới bạn 
ban để ban trong tại cho bạn nông thôn rồi mãi nhưng chưa được định nâng tên nâng tên bạn bạn tên once you develop a multiple drug resistant tb your treatment duration becomes longer so it may last up to two years chances of getting cured becomes half and it is more painful this could be avoided if there is better compliance if there is better counseling if there is a better delivery of care ແລະຊົມແມ່ຮອມຖ້າສະບາຍຈົມເພີບໂດຍສາຕາບານຊ່ວຍພະຍາບານຈຶ່ງເລືອບເບງດອກປະຊາຊົນຍົມຕອນ
I went to the health center nearby. I met a girl there. She had played for a cleaner at the clinic to give her pills. But the pills were not correct. Her abortion did not work. She was at hospital to clean her womb. There were many girls like this. I, I was, I was terrified. I didn't want Mwanza to go through what I did. My mother and I went together to the health center. A trained nurse helped me to make an informed decision on my choices. She gave me two types of tablets called Mifepristone and Misoprosto. Mwansa, take one tablet of Mifepristone here today, and then tomorrow you must take the remaining four tablets of Misoprosto. Before I went home, the nurse told me about contraception. When my abortion was complete, I felt relieved. The emotions of fear and, and anxiety flew out of my mind. I knew I had done the right thing for my future. I wouldn't have been able to finish school. When you look at me, you would not know that I have had an abortion. Não é que as pessoas saltam de avião, se calhar nunca as passou para a cabeça saltar de avião ou coisas desse género, não é? 
e, e é engraçado como a doença põe muita coisa em perspectiva e as pessoas, mesmo que não aconteça, vivem sempre com essa enorme ansiedade de como é que eu vou estar amanhã, como é que eu vou estar daqui a um ano, como é que isto vai evoluir. Se nós ficarmos zangados e revoltados, vai resolver? Não, não vai resolver nada. Então, desfrutem a vida, mesmo com a doença, procurem vivê-la, porque ela não vai impedir de viver. A esclerose múltipla não é uma doença mortal, não é uma doença impeditiva. Vivam! Não podem fazer a 100, façam 80. Não podem fazer 80, façam 50. Mas façam, não fiquem parados. Vivam! Porque isto só o facto de, de ser pai. Nunca tinha andado de avião, andei a primeira vez e saltei. Pai, é uma coisa mesmo. I found that over the past weeks that I've needed this moment in the morning just to be quiet and to think about what's happening. You know, you take a little moment like, oh, so it's okay to cry right now because, you know, my kids aren't going to see me and be upset, but also my colleagues aren't going to see me because I feel like I have to be strong at work too for, for them and for me. Um, so it's nice to be home and to be a little bit vulnerable sometimes. And that's okay because, uh, You know, we, I think everybody has lived through a lot. You always know in the back of your mind something terrible could happen. A terrible event that you might be involved in as a healthcare professional, I think that looms in our minds, we know that. And yet, everything that's happened has been sort of surreal. Even though we knew that COVID was in other parts of the world. I don't know that we really understood how overwhelming this was going to be. As emergency nurses, we are on the front line. We care for patients struggling with opioid abuse. We care for victims of gun violence. And I don't know that a society really understands what we're seeing, what we're experiencing. But I think if people did, then perhaps much more attention would be paid to these huge dilemmas that our society's facing. When we first started encountering patients who were having COVID-like symptoms, um, you know, we did our best to get them into the department. We were trying to make sure they were consolidated either in one place or in isolation rooms. When it first hit me was when we received a patient, she was demanding oxygen. I can't breathe, I can't, I can't breathe. And She just snatched the oxygen from me. And then it was like a tsunami. It just totally took over. People were just desperately trying to save lives, desperately trying to keep patients going. For us at St. Joe's, you know, we serve our community, and our community is the type of community that was hit hard. I just think that we have to be open to looking outside of what the structure and the framework has been traditionally in this country, because it's not working. And COVID just amplified where it doesn't work. There has to be better solutions. All our rooms were filled, and that was when we converted the whole waiting room into a treatment space. I remembered how it is to work in a provincial hospital. Back home, patients would be everywhere, and it would be in a basketball court. So I used that as a form of guidance for me. I've been a nurse for 30 years, but I've never had like five patients die 
on the same day. I, I cried many days. I cried many days. Because their families weren't there. So I felt. I knew how the family would feel. What I want the families to know more than anything is that their loved one wasn't alone. That I sat with them and held their hand and we were caring for them and we were present. All of us were. All of us were. And so I hope family members can take some comfort in that, knowing that the people they were loved were never alone, that we were there for them. At the end of the day, I have to remind myself, be present, be here, be now. Particularly when that question always comes back, Mom, what happened at work today? What'd you do? And this, I'm not talking to them about. I, they, they know what we're dealing with, but I try to shelter them a little bit because it's, uh, um, I don't want them to know how bad it's been. I don't want them to know. You know, you can't explain to your kid what it's like to see somebody die or, or to see somebody so distressed or in agony. And, you know, to hold somebody's hand as their heart stops beating is a very hard thing to describe to anybody else. It is a very, very strange time. A lot of questions, a lot of uncertainty, because every week is a new story that we're trying to unfold. Right now, we feel like we've got a cliffhanger because we don't know what the next phase is gonna bring. Pandu pandu pandu, orang itu utam manusia pun ada. Albu da manusia. Karena ada cili lori, orang orang dalam mula kata gan mana jadi. Kunjung ada lasu gan lori, kawida gan lori diri. Udia kata gan teri, orang orang teri dua ram sanjiri jadi. Orang orang beri nanti kata, orang orang kunjung gan negar. Agam saya orang orang tak kenal kita ni ramu. Orang kirim kerat orang adap, jangan lewat dega ti unda kira. Macam, nama le pohon kirim sedih ciri no, abu orang dalbar kaligar, illa. Hari malam ada jalan katain, abu orang mudik kerai ramu. Abang itu bidang gal, illa dah ayat perum, nama lara ni illa. Abang itu kata ayat anggal ini kulla bodi gal lara ni perum, nama lara ni dah ayat dari cilla. Arya kata gal, katu gal ayi abang itu teri bandi illa. Anggana neral matra mai, shasam muti jiwi kena. Orang bawah dah lebih ramai cerita orang deh, kami cerita. Kami orang bawah ko, noko gitu ya. Padahal yang jahalnya bidya keragangan kelipur lah manusia. Abar, kami kita mana kerja dulu, orang cenggilan kami kita teriye kuda. Kami kum, lebih orang orang kata naga. Jiwa orang dengan orang jahalnya bidya le.
does health mean to you? For many people, it is the foundation to do the things in life they love, to enjoy the company of others, to work, to play, to learn, to laugh. Health is life. So many people have lost their health in the past year, but they have lost so much more. Their jobs, their ability to see their families, to travel, to live life. And more than 2.7 million of our sisters and brothers have lost their lives and we have lost them. The hard truth is that some of those people died simply because they could not get the care they needed because of where they live or how much they earn. Inequality is not a new problem, but COVID-19 has brought it into sharp focus. The pandemic has pushed an estimated 120 million people into extreme poverty. It has significantly increased gender inequalities with more women than men leaving the labor force. And as we speak, rich countries are vaccinating their populations while the world's poor watch and wait. Health inequalities are not just unfair. They make the world less safe and less sustainable. So, as they build back from COVID-19, it's vital for all governments to invest in better health services and remove the barriers that prevent so many people from using them. So, more people have the chance to live healthy lives. Welcome and thanks a lot to those who already watched our previous session, this opening session of this annual event of the Health for All Film Festival. You heard the Director General, Dr. Tedros, mentioning the winners. So now it's the first uh, award ceremony. And uh, for newcomers who didn't watch this opening session, I remind you that we have a game ongoing throughout the event today, which is based on a simple question. Do you like to tell positive stories? To know more about this, please come back later to our YouTube publication of this event and watch the opening session during which we explain how the game can be played and uh, how you can share your positive stories about health. So, so it's time, time now, now for, for the first award ceremony of the second, second edition of the Health for All Film, Film Festival, Festival with our category dedicated to better health and well-being. One of Tobecho's major global public health goals in line with the way it shows constitution considering that health is not just the absence of diseases, but it has to be considered as a better stage of well-being that anyone should be able to access in his or living, her living conditions. I'm just summarizing, you can check the, the constitution of the way show online and on the website and you would have the exact wording of, of, of this constitution. 
In addition to this award ceremony, in the coming few hours, we have other award ceremonies which will be dedicated to other categories of the competition. So please look at the full agenda in our festival webpage. You can see the, the link appearing on the screen right now. And many thanks to spread the word about these ceremonies so that many, many people could join during the day. So now it's time to present uh, the guests of this ceremony. And first of all, I would like to introduce our jurors for this category of the competition. And uh, they are here with us online. So one of, uh, I have to explain to you that in this jury team, we have external jurors, external to the break show, I mean. And uh, in fact, you, these persons are advising the director general. And we have also senior WHO experts who are part of the jury team. So we have Eugenio Derbez, actors from Mexico, who is part of his jury team. And he's represented today by Javier Williams, execu executive producer working with, uh, with him. Javier, are you with us at the moment? Yes, I am here. Okay. Hello. Hello to everybody. Hello. Hello, Javier. Would you say a, a couple of words about uh, your participation in this jury and who you are? Uh, as you said, I'm an executive producer working in Los Angeles with Eugenio Derves and his production company. And we were very happy at watching the, the, the films that we got to watch and deciding on who would be getting this prize, uh, recognizing the efforts and the wonderful stories that they were telling us in those films. And Eugenio, who wasn't able to be here today because of his previous commitments, wanted me to share a message that he recorded for this occasion. Hello, everyone. Um, I really wish I could be there to celebrate all the hard work and dedication of so many talented filmmakers. But uh, unfortunately, I'm on location working on my next project. Um, however, I do wish to send my deepest heartfelt congratulations to all the participants and, of course, to the Grand Prix and Special Prize Health Educational Film for the Youth Winners. Uh, my business partner, Javier, and I and uh, we really enjoyed viewing all the selected films in the better health and well-being category. We believe that the, the messages portrayed in these films are very important and very timely. Being able to promote health and well-being through our craft is a wonderful opportunity and a great responsibility too. So keep creating new stories and filming new projects. I hope to see more of your work in the future. Gracias, saludos, and bye. Thank you, Eugenio. Uh, I was calling you Eugenio, you see, Javier. So, thank you to both of you. Sonia Lohman from USA is a documentary film writer and director. Sonia, are you with us? Yes, hello. Hello, Happy Sonia. <laughs> okay, please introduce yourself and uh, how you joined this jury. You were a winner last year, and uh, I propose to you to be in the jury this year. So a few words to introduce you yourself please um hi so i'm sonia loman um as mentioned i'm a director in the u.s um i work actually full-time with a humanitarian relief organization called international medical corps so i definitely have a passion for the work that the who does around the world and we similarly do you know disaster relief work around the world um I also am a director. I've done two feature films um, in the U.S. on racial and social justice. Um, and then last year, I, as Giles mentioned, I submitted to the WHO my film um, about midwives in South Sudan, which has one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world. Um, and that film won the, the grand prize of that category. So it was an honor to be asked to be part of the jury and to be able to see this um, incredible you know, talent and storytelling that was submitted and, and watch all these incredible films. And we're excited to, to present the winners today. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. And we'll come back with you for discussion with our winners, with both of you. And I am here with Dr. Maria Nera, director of the Department of Environmental Health. Maybe I'm summarizing the, your department name. Uh, Maria, would you like to introduce yourself a little more, please, and your participation in this? Hi, Gilles. Thank you very much. Essentially, what I am, I'm a public health officer. I'm somebody convinced, committed, and passionate about public health and well-being. 
Formally, I'm the director of the Department of Environment, Climate Change and Health here at the World Health Organization. And for me, it has been an amazing experience because you know, you, you, you enter into another world. Creativity, artists, and all of these uh, films have been a fantastic experience for me. And, and really, I appreciate and, uh, to be part of this. So thanks for inviting me, Jill. You're welcome. You're welcome, all of you. So we have, we'll give uh, three prizes during this awards, uh, this first award ceremony. And uh, one will be the Grand Prix for this category, Better Health and Wellbeing. We have a student film prize, which was chosen from the overall shortlist of 56 films selected. And another special prize chosen from uh, also the full shortlist. This is the prize dedicated to health educational film for the youth. And uh, it's a way to highlight that our film festival is not only a tribute to WHO, to that the tribute that WHO can do to arts and to filmmaking, but it will be an occasion also to show that it's about health promotion, health education, how the films can be used, especially for the youth in this case, for creating awareness. So we are going to have a special uh, panel discussion on this, and I'm going to speak to you about that a bit later. So I think it's time now, Maria, maybe to, to offer a prize. And let's start with a student film prize. Uh, so I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, Kim. Kim, could you help me, please, Kim? <laughs> how do you, your hey second? Jin. Sorry? Uh, my name is Hejin Kim. Hejin. Hejin. Okay. Kim yes. Hejin. Okay, so welcome, Kim Hejin. So, uh, as Dr. Tedros announced during our previous session, you are the winner of a student film prize for a film called Cephalea, uh, yes. a film you produced in Albania. It's a fiction that you created. And uh, could, you, could you give us a first feedback on, on your impression with this prize, please? Um, I'm very glad and honor to have uh, this prize, to be the winner of the prize, the special student prize. And I'm especially happy uh, because uh, um, thanks to this prize, uh, my film can be shown to many people and this uh, subject about the environmental pollution in Albania and uh, can be uh, more aware of to the people. Uh, so I'm very glad. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So we are going now to, to have Maria Nera uh, offering you a present. This is my pleasure on behalf of the World Health Organization to offer you this prize of the Health for All Film Festival. And uh, we recognize the fantastic work that you did. Your film is really very, very powerful. It's done with a lot of commitment and passion, and you deserve this uh, award on the health and well-being category. So thank you, and big congratulations. This is our little Oscar. And I will say maybe even more important than an Oscar, because it's about health and well-being. So I cannot imagine anything more important than that. To you, thank you very much, yes. and congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can you take it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, thank you, Maria, and thank you, Kim. So, Maria, before we go to, to the other prize, uh, Kim is going to have a panel discussion with our colleagues, uh, a colleague in Euro and the uh, European Office of the World Health Organization, and with some uh, other youth delegates from the Netherlands. I think it would be important that you would give feedback about the topic. We are going to have another price also on, uh, on pollution. What is WHO's action and, and how do you recognize that this topic is, is really important for WHO? Yes, Jill. The, the, the film is really particularly strong and you have to follow until the end because it describes the situation where 
Many children, unfortunately, are living today in the middle of pollution. It looks like uh, human beings these days, we pollute everything we touch. The air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. And this is causing more than 25% of the global burden of diseases these days. So we need to work on the environment, making it healthier, because this is the best way to protect our health. So thank you for this film, because it contributes very much to that. Thank you, Maria. So if you, if you want to watch this film and to listen more about what Kim has to say the, about her production and how some other young people would react to such a story, I invite you to watch the next session of this uh, today's event on the film festival, which is dedicated to health promotion, health education for the youth. This film will be shown there. So thank you again, Kim, for being with us, receiving your trophy right now and uh, wish you a good conversation in the next session. Thank you. Now, we are going to have the Grand Prix for the Better Health and Wellbeing category of this Health for All Film Festival. And I have to welcome now the winner, Jorik Dozi. Jorik Dozi, are you with us? Hey, hello. Hi, everyone. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So. As Dr. Tedros announced during the previous session, you have won the Grand Prix for Better Health and Well-Being for a film which is called The Journey of Hope that you filmed in India. And uh, you presented that, you are yourself from the Netherlands and you presented that with Shen Lin from Malaysia. So would you give us a first reaction from you and you or you both and uh, how, how you decided to produce this film? Yeah, I mean, first of all, thank you so much for this incredible prize. I, um, I, I co-founded a, a production company called Studio Birthplace, and we focus on ecological and humanitarian storytelling. So to be part of a festival like this and to have our story and our film be recognized by uh, an organization such as the World Health Organization is really uh, yeah, it's an incredible honor for us. And seeing the films in the festival, I can only imagine how, how tough it is to choose a winner because I feel all, all of the stories in this festival are important and um, I just feel very honored and glad that through hopefully through this platform and through this we get a little bit more exposure on the issue and on the topic and uh, more people can, can know about it. Yes, and we are going to, to develop that a little bit with you and with our jurors uh, right now and I hope it's indeed the start for you to, to have in even more people interested by the topic you raised. So, Maria, that's the time now for our second trophy. <laughs> thank you, Please. thank you, Jill. I'm getting used to that. It's, yeah. it's, it's really a privilege. I feel like in the Oscar ceremony here, and the Oscar goes to, and uh, it is my pleasure to, uh, to this uh, a, a journey of hope to give you the, the, the prize of Toplecho on the Health for All Film Festival, health and well-being. You really deserve it. I hope that the next one will be a real one that you can collect in our premises or even at the Oscar ceremony. Why not? So thank you very much. This is the beginning. I'm sure you have more awards. So please take it. It's for you. <laughs> thank you well so done, much. Guys. <laughs> Thank you, thank okay, you. Okay, yes, that's, thank you, Maria, to, to, to present like that, because uh, it's indeed not easy. We would love to be in a movie theater and to do this ceremony where you would be invited and to join us, both jurors and winners, and uh, we have to do all this online. So thanks for presenting like that. And now I think we should watch your film. And uh, so let's, and we'll speak about it after, after the, the screening. So let's watch The Journey of Hope, a story happening in, in, in India. Sapna. हमने तुम्हें ये नाम दिया था क्योंकि हम चाहते थे कि तुम अपने सारे सपने पूरे करो
पर तुम लड़ रही हो लड़ रही हो इस कैंसर से मेरी बेटी तुम इसे हराओगे Somewhere in the fog I heard a cry It kept me up for hours haunts me every night Screaming through my veins the fire spreads Fill me up with poison Dark clouds overhead I'm soaking wet I'm hurt I'm hurt you didn't know But there's no pretty way to tell you so I'm tired so tired I'm letting go I've been burning flies to let you know time is up time has flown Time has flown. Here she comes. She lays beside my head. She holds me through my winter in this awful bed. Softly in my ear, she casts her spell. Fuck this cursed cancer. Send it straight to hell she knows me well I'm hurt this body's wearing thin A beautiful mistake I'm living in I'm tired sometimes I fantasize They push me out to see coins on my eyes family friends say goodbye say goodbye You just watch The Journey of Hope, the Grand Prix of the Elf Hall Film Festival for the category Better Health and Well-Being. And now we, as you noticed uh, in the beginning of the conversation, we have the jurors and the winner who is here with us. And I would like to give immediately the floor to uh, Sonia Lohmann, 
uh, with our external juror in this category. And so that Sonia, you would share with the winner your impression for this film. And uh, after that, we'll have Javier and Maria also sharing their experience in the jury team. Sonia, the floor is yours. Yeah, wow. I mean, just everybody saw how incredibly emotional and impactful that is. I mean, it definitely brought me to tears and just congratulations on making such a beautiful film. Um, I mean, we were absolutely united in just how gorgeously it's shot, first of all. So just from a technical standpoint, from a filmmaking standpoint, I mean, you're incredibly talented cinematographer, um, really, really, really beautiful. Um, and then we thought it was just so creative and clever to just use this song as kind of the backdrop, um, this really emotionally impactful song um, to create kind of like a very uh, highly emotional, highly stylized sort of music video that has such a strong, strong um, social, socially conscious message. Um, so I've never seen anything quite like that. It was just really stunning and as someone who who really loves music and also creates through the lens of, you know, always thinking about songs and what song am I going to use in a film? It's like really drives me to um, just being driven forward by that song, but then having a very clear narrative arc through it where you really tell this story um, visually is, and just such a, such again, emotionally impactful, touching, touching, devastating um, story that really stays with you. I mean, we were all just so affected by it and it really, really stays with you and you, you really remember it. And, and we hope that everybody sees it. You know, we hope that this, this helps really get it out there because it's such an important, um, film and, and congratulations on, on making such a beautiful, beautiful project that, that really, um, needs to be seen by, by so many people. Thank you. I appreciate that. Do, do you have a question, Sonia, for, uh, Mr. Joe, sorry, Jorik, yeah, Jorik, do I pronounce your name correctly? Jorik, yeah, Jorik, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, I'm sorry, I think I mispronounced your name. Um, yeah, sure, I mean, of course, I would be curious of what um, uh, you kind of, how you came across this, this story, this particular mm -hmm. young girl, um, and then why you made that choice to tell it through sort of a Kind of a music video type format and the song and did you did you know the song or did you meet the girl and then you know the song how did that come together for you yeah for sure so it like you said it's a it's a film that really um kind of bridges the gap between music video and documentary and the project actually came about through the artist uh simil who's a, a singer songwriter based in america and he lost uh, someone close to him uh, to cancer and he wrote a song to kind of deal with those emotions um, which is the song Flags which is what you hear uh, in the film and he reached out to us to make a video about showing someone going through dealing with cancer and suffering from cancer but in a very different scenario so he, it, he didn't want to tell the story from kind of a more maybe uh, Western based point of view where, you know, you have, uh, uh, there's, there's healthcare for most people. So we, we stumbled on this story of the, um, the cancer train, the Indian cancer train. And this is a story that grew and grew more as we research more about it. And it, uh, we try to kind of figure out how we can tell this such a large story of, um, this region in India, which is kind of the region um, in between Punjab and Haryana in the in the northwestern side of India. And this is known as India's cancer belt. And there's a train that goes through this region and ends in um, uh, Bikaner, this city Bikaner, where there is a cancer hospital that offers basically free or very subsidized um, treatment and diagnosis for underprivileged patients. So it's this really big story that we kind of try to see how can we uh, put that in the music video. So we tried to find a cancer patient who kind of came from this region, took this cancer train, um, and our, we, we found a local producer, a line producer uh, called Purvi Magwana, who is an amazing producer. And she basically went to uh, the hospital and found Sapna, the girl that you that you see in the film. And she actually really showed us the full story through what she was going through. Uh, her father is a farmer and she's from a, a very small village. Her family lives on about one dollar a day. 
And um, most experts and, and in research states that um, actually the cost for this high increase in cancer in this region is due to the overuse of pesticides in food production. And the overflow of all these pesticides kind of ends up in rivers and flows downstream into through all these villages that people use for their drinking water and their washing. So they get exposed to all these chemicals. And Sapna is from one of these villages and her father actually is a farmer who uses these pesticides on the land, which could indirectly kind of cause her illness. So it was a very, um, yeah, that, that the story was there. So we, we tried to uh, see if we could follow Sapna and we, we spent time with her and um, on her journey to the hospital in Bikaner, which is about an eight hour overnight journey um, to get her treatment. Um, yeah, from this from this hospital, and so that's kind of how we how the whole project fell apart. Long story, but thank you, Jorik, for for explaining to us how you came to, to to tell this story. This is really much about the film festival to to explain and to 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 encourage people to tell stories about health. And the way you explain how you came to that is really interesting. I would like Javier Javier Williams, please uh, share your experience as a, uh, in the jury team. And uh, do you have also another question for uh, Jorik? Yes, of course. First of all, congratulations, Jorik. It, it, it's, it's a wonderful short film, a wonderful story. And after Eugenio and I were watching all of, this, all of these films, this is one that we, I, I, I can confide to you that we've shown to many people and we definitely want to keep showing to many people just because of the way that it connects to, to, to the story that you want to tell and that how it connects to everybody. And, and you're right, there were many options and it was really, really hard to choose. So I, I think it's good for, for me to just have very clear in our minds, what were the three aspects that when Eugenio and I were watching the films stood out in, in your film and that's why we recommended it for this prize. First of all, as Sonia was saying, the cinematography and the technical aspect of it is, is beautiful. It's beautifully shot, the colors are wonderful, the pace is great the the lenses that you use are, are are the the perfect ones to tell the story so the technical aspect was one second of all was the story the uh, all of that that you were talking about the 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 story of sapna and and how she's trying to manage her disease in this in this place in the world that is literally not prepared for that is such a a strong story that we really felt that it was uh, uh, something that should be heard and seen uh, but third of all, and probably for us, it was the, the most important aspect was the emotional drive that your story brought to us. It was a story that connected to, uh, with us in, in a very strong way through, through the emotion that, you know, the combination of the images, the story and the music, obviously, was, was crafting in this beautiful story. So we, we, we know that sometimes you watch foreign or faraway problems and it's really hard to connect because it's not your reality. If you don't see that kind of problem every single day, if you don't take that train, if you fortunately don't have anybody suffering from that disease, it can seem as a very, very, you know, far away problem. And I think, or we thought that your film was very, very good in bringing that to us, being, bringing it uh, built around a story with a very digestible form, a beautiful song that, you know, is wonderful in its own right. So. We definitely love that. And obviously that story with a twist, as you were saying, that at the end of this story narrated through a music, you end up understanding that it's the activities that her father is doing that probably cause her own disease, which is just, you know, in terms of, of cinematography and storytelling, it's just drama, drama at its purest. And, and, and we thought that it was a, a, a great film that was, you know, building a wonderful story that should be seen and heard throughout the world. So congratulations for that, Yorick. Thank you. It's it's actually, it, it just quickly interrupt. It's actually so, um, it's so unfortunate because of course her father doesn't have all, an alternative way of living and providing for his family. So being in in the situation that he's in, that's the best income that he can make. And that's really the only job for him in the region. Um, and that is has a chance of actually making the people around him in his village sick and, and make, I mean, most likely made his daughter sick. So it's just a terrible situation that they should really not be in. 
And um, the overuse of pesticides is mainly caused because it's not regulated. The farmers are not taught the proper kind of way of handling them, um, which causes all these issues. So there's definitely programs and, and, and NGOs that are trying to fix that, but it's a tough situation for a lot of them. Yeah. Especially now with COVID, uh, it's, yeah, I can't even imagine it's, it's a hard, it's a hard region to be in. Absolutely. It's a horrible paradox because of your, as you're saying, you know, that's probably the only job that her father can do. And, and it, it, it's just a, a, a bad circle to be around. No, there's no other thing that, that at, the, at this moment they can do. So it's, it's great that this type of projects and specifically your short story brings, uh, it puts a spotlight in that problem. Thank, thank you to thank you Javier. Thank you to both of you. Indeed, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. you. That's exactly the kind of discussion we would we were hoping to have between jurors and winners. So it's really great to listen to you both. We have Dr. Maria Nera with us, and uh, Maria, you are as director of Envir uh, Department of Environmental Health. We have had this student film prize about uh, pollution due to oil. We have now this uh, Grand Prix linked to a pollution due to pesticide. Uh, what, WHO, what is your comment as WHO director on these issues regarding the danger of pollution for health? Yeah, the, the, this film, uh, Jill, and the previous one raised awareness about the, the problem of toxic chemicals and other systems that are polluting our daily life and causing a lot of disease. Unfortunately, as you rightly say, it's not uh, the farmer's uh, fault. I mean, it's, it's, it's the lack of a coherent and good politics uh, to make sure that we are able to have a sustainable agricultural production or reducing the access to all of those toxics. This is the work of WHO. We identify the toxic chemicals, we uh, inform the authorities, and we put in place the systems for the governments to take measures to avoid that uh, uh, dangerous exposure. But there is a lot of work to do, as you can imagine. So thank you for raising awareness of that, and hopefully that will contribute to our work, Jills, with governments. Yeah, there's another point which is uh, not only environmental, but uh, on the access to health care, because we see in this film that uh, this girl has to travel by train quite far away from the specialized doctors to, or nurses and so on to treat her. Uh, so this is telling something about universal health coverage and access to quality care. Would you, would you come out on that? I think this is part of our work. The first part will be to prevent. So ideally, we would like this uh, girl not to have this problem because we could avoid exposure to this toxic chemical. And the second part is when you develop a disease, obviously the message is very clear, universal health coverage. So everybody should have access to free of cost and, and, and affordable, if not, Healthcare, because this is the only way as a society that we will be successful. We need to protect our people, no matter, no other solution. Thank you, Maria. So, thanks, thanks to, to the three of you. We, are, we have another prize to announce uh, in this ceremony. So, Jorik, Jorik Dozi, congratulations again for your film. Thank you for, sh for what you shared with us during this discussion about how you made it and, and how you cho cho choose the topic. Uh, we wish you a, a huge success with this film and, and especially about raising awareness on such issues. Uh, congratulations again. Thank you for being with us and we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we have now the special prize for the health educational film for the youth which uh, has been announced by Dr. Tedros. Uh, so you, you know that this prize was won by Anita Abada for a film called Efun, Efun, Flesh Between Brackets. It's a film, uh, a story in Nigeria about, about female genital mutilations. So Anita, are you with us? Yeah, okay. good evening. Yes, nice to hear you, Anita. So what's your first impression? Yeah, what's your first impression of receiving this prize? I'm really, really excited and um, I feel so honored to have my film Ifun um, 
selected for the special prize because it's actually a story that means so much to me and i believe it's a story that would um get across to so many young women and youth out there and so i feel really honored to be selected for this prize this film was in the same category better health and well-being because when we say better health and well-being we don't un speak only about env environmental issues we speak also about uh, uh, gender gender issues gender equity and we speak about all the conditions with in the society that uh, that could uh, contribute to, to, to a better well-being, so social, uh, social determinants of health, uh, this kind of thing. So I wanted to give this precision before Maria would offer you a present, Anita. So your turn, Maria, please. Dear Anita, uh, let me give you this special prize. Um, this is the trophy that we are presenting to you on behalf of the World Health Organization and uh, on this uh, film festival, Health for All. You really deserve it. Your film is uh, absolutely terrible, terrible, I have to say. Uh, people have to watch it. As a woman, as a doctor, as someone who has been working in places where, unfortunately, the, the female genital mutilation is still occurring, I really congratulate you for, for doing this really dramatic story. Uh, I hope we can celebrate one day with this prize the fact that not anymore will be practiced. So let's have as well some hope and thanks for putting on the table such a terrible topic for everybody to be aware of what is happening every day to many girls around the world. Thank you, Anita. Please take it. Come on, goes to you. Thank it's heavy. you so much. Thank Whoa. you. <laughs> I keep it for you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. So, so yes, Maria, I remember in the jury deliberation, you were uh, very, that's a topic we, you're uh, very concerned about. And uh, it's, it's, it's just a jilt that is difficult to, to imagine. In 2021, we are still facing this type of public health issue and challenge. And as a society, it's, it's difficult to imagine that this exists, but it's the reality. And again, so much to do about this. So I think the audience need to, to see the film also, because yeah. you now you have received your trophy. So let's watch your film, Anita Abada, Efun that we will comment a little more after the screening. Let's watch the film. ESA is every girl must pass through these rights to become a woman. It's his tradition. And girls who go through it are clean, beautiful, and become real women. It is time. Can I play with them just once more? No, you are no longer like them. Today, you become a woman. I don't want to do this. You don't have a choice. Don't worry. You won't see it. The last time he prepared someone for this right, it was my sister. Osai. I remember Osai telling me what it is like. She said it is like a journey to hell and back, even though none of us has been there before. A part of her was cut away. She never got better. She died. Ian said it is God's will. They'll be here soon, okay? Don't worry, it will be quick. I don't want to be like Osai. What if I have a choice? <sighs> you know, choice isn't one of the luxuries of every woman.
to be a woman. But I also want to be able to make choices. You have just watched Fun, the special prize for health educational film for the youth attributed by the Health for All Film Festival for its second edition. Uh, I have uh, Sonia, Sonia Lohmann in the jury who is with us and I would like you Sonia to, to also comment this film. Uh, you have al also directed films in Africa, you know a little bit certainly Africa. Do you have a question also for Anita Abada and, and a comment on her film? Yeah, so first of all, congratulations, um, Anita. It was really stunning. It was actually the first film I watched um, and it really stuck with me. I kept thinking about it even as I was watching the other ones. It really stuck with me. Um, you know, as again, someone who's worked in the NGO space for a really long time and as Maria mentioned, it's it's sort of shocking that this still is um, such a pervasive issue um, and a lot of people don't know about it so on the first on the first hand it's just you know again the awareness raising is really important so just even knowing that that is still happening so so widely um, but as somebody who actually did really know a lot about it in a theoretical sense and this study you know I've spent a lot of time working on women's rights and has sort of read a lot about um, female genital mutilation that your three minute film did more than any study I could have read, any research I could have done. I mean, it just really made it so much more visceral and emotional. I mean, I was like, you know, gripping the whole time. I mean, it just, it's just to, to see that brought to life in a sort of a narrative way, in a way that you can connect with this young girl's experience, you know, especially as a woman, like kind of really feeling that very, again, sort of viscerally, um, was just I thought was really was really brilliant and really needed to to move the conversation forward because it's one thing when it's very abstract and it's stats and it's something that's kind of out there and it's another thing when you were actually like going through the experience of it you know with a young girl and really connecting to her experience so um I just wanted to say it was really really needed and really impactful and thank you for making it and congratulations and it's well deserved um i think you're very talented and um very thank passionate you. so congratulations um i don't know if you want me to ask a question i know we're kind of running low <laughs> on time but you had mentioned a question or just leave it at that yeah I, I have a question to you anita myself uh did you when you submitted your film did you uh, think you could have an health educational prize? I mean, did you think your film would be an educational tool for the youth? Yes, um, definitely. The um, major reason I made that film was because I wanted to educate people. I wanted to enlighten people on um, this practice. And as we all know already, it's uh, it's very common in um, Africa, where, where I come from. It's common in um, Asia and the Middle East. And it's surprising, like you said, to see that in 2021, girls are still made to go through female genital mutilation. And in as much as a lot of people are not um, um, enlightened about the health risk of this. We know that this um, practice actually causes um, trauma, psychological trauma. It has physical effects. It has it has so many health effects on these ch um, young children. So um, the purpose of really making the film is to reach out to communities within Africa, yeah, where I stay, to reach out to um, communities around the globe to educate people more on the risk of um, female genital mutilation through um, the eyes of a young girl who was made to go through a practice she didn't want to go through but thankfully she had a mother who could actually stand by her to say okay no this is the hand because she actually had a child whom she had lost 
through this practice of female genital mutilation. So I believe um, if we talk about it more, if we educate people more, and film is a tool for change because it, it has a wider reach globally. So if we can do this more, I believe we will reach a wider audience. Thanks a lot, Anita, for, for your testimony on this. And indeed, we all hope here in the WHO and the jury team that this film is going to be educational, not only for the youth and for girls and teenagers, but also for the mothers, because you film, your story shows that the mother is the one standing, standing in front of her daughter to, to, to say no. And uh, I guess in Africa, it's really a matter of mothers being, con being aware and, and being engaged, like the one you have shown in your film. So we have to move to, to the conclusion of this award ceremony. And uh, the jury team was impressed by the, the quality of films submitted in this category, Better Health and Wellbeing, and decided to attribute a special mention. So we are going to end uh, this uh, award ceremony by watching the special mention, which is a film from France uh, called Match. It's about disability. It's about uh, a story you will see that when you watch it. And uh, it shows also another dimension of better health and well-being, how mental health of persons affected by disabilities uh, and how the people around them can help for better, better, better well-being in these conditions. So before we watch the film, I would like my uh, the different jurors to give a conclusion uh, on this category and, and on the film festival itself. Maria, would you give your conclusion and then we go to Sonia and Javier. Uh, again, it's, it's for, for the people working on health, this is a fantastic opportunity to use your talent, your creativity, your innovation, your technique to promote health and well-being and universal health coverage. So thank you very much for using your, your fantastic brains and creativity to help us. Health is a very good cause, so we have you now on board, and we are very, very proud to create this movement of using films for promoting health. Thank you, Jules. Thank you, Maria. Thanks a lot. Javier, uh, last word from you about the festival. Yes, and your... uh, very Go briefly, it was wonderful for Eugenio and me to watch these great films. Congratulations to all the filmmakers that are bringing all of these health issues to the forefront and helping communicate them in the very best way possible. Wonderful films, beautiful films. We definitely would like to keep on watching things that you do in the future. Thanks a lot, Javier. Thanks. And Sonia, it's your turn. Yeah, so congratulations again. Um, just beautiful, beautiful films. And I just want to say how um, wonderful this this festival is. Um, as someone, again, who's who works every day in this field, just like, you know, Lorena and just like, um, Giles and just like Maria and everybody else, we you know it's really really hard to communicate um, sometimes the urgency of these issues that are really impacting so many individual lives all the time and um, you know it's 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 hard 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 work and it's hard to move the needle on these seemingly kind of intractable global issues and so we really really need talented storytellers like like you guys and and this platform like the WHO has provided to to help communicate these stories because again it's so much more emotionally impactful when you can connect to an individual stories when you can see the humanity um, behind these issues um, and really remember how connected we are and how much we we need to to stand with and for each other so um yeah continue to continue to make these stories and to continue to raise awareness um and use your talents so that you know the people who are on the ground doing this work the ngos and the international organizations you know can have more and more um you know power to really to help impact people's lives you really are the platform and the the microphone that's needed for these issues so thank you guys <laughs> thank you sonia thank you so much you you, 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 you mentioned the goal of this festival that the World Health Organization is organizing so, so that the, indeed more and more stories about health and uh, good stories told in different ways, whether it's fiction, movie, documentary, animation films. And uh, we are going to, to discover more in, the, in this event day right now because we have other sessions. As I mentioned, we have a session right now 
uh, you will check the agenda in our webpage, w which is appearing at, at below the screen. But we have this panel discussion about uh, health promotion, health education for the youth, which is going to, to start soon. And we have all the ceremonies coming after that. So please check the agenda and stay tuned. And uh, let's continue to spread the word to all together about making films on health issues. Many thanks. Children are our future. Societies that help their children to achieve their full potential thrive and grow economically. That's why it's so important to protect our children from one of the greatest dangers they face, the toxins and particles in polluted air. Children are future crave clean air so they can survive and thrive. Our future craves clean air, but... Air pollution is increasing. We are facing an emergency. Nine out of 10 children do not breathe safe air. Children are closer to the ground to car exhausts and indoor smoke. They breathe faster than adults, taking in more of the polluted air. And their developing bodies are more likely to be damaged by the toxins in the air. Every year, 600,000 children die from breathing polluted air. Before a baby takes her first breath, she's being harmed by the toxins her mother is inhaling. Half of all deaths from lung infection in young children in lower middle income countries are due to air pollution. If that baby survives childhood, the daily damage done to her brain, lungs, heart will limit her chances of growing into a healthy, productive adult. Cognitive damage, lowering of a child's ability to learn, means children exposed to air pollution will struggle at school and fail to reach their full potential. Terrible damage has been done, but it is still not too late to change. By prescribing clean air for children, Policymakers can save lives and protect them from the lifelong effects of air pollution exposure. We all have a role to play. Activists, experts, economic and political leaders, and individuals can all take steps to better manage waste, change the way we travel, monitor air quality, and regulate production of pollutants, among many other potential actions. But we have no time to waste. We can and we must act now. What causes nearly one in eight deaths worldwide affects more than 80% of people living in cities, but is often invisible. What leads to more than a quarter of deaths from heart disease, 30% of the deaths from stroke, and kills as many people each year as the number of breaths you take? The answer, air pollution. Air pollution is the single greatest environmental health risk we all face. 
It threatens our bodies, our climate, and our future. There are solutions to cleaning our air and cooling our planet. global health crisis together in order to protect our planet and ensure a healthy future for us all. Join us in breathing life back into our cities. <laughs> there are better things than tobacco to take your breath away. Choose health, not tobacco. Films are a powerful way to raise awareness, improve understanding, and encourage action. So the Health for All Film Festival from the World Health Organization aims to contribute to health promotion and education about health. Now this year, the second year for the festival, we had over 1,200 film contributions from around the world. But there was a concerted effort on behalf of the World Health Organization to put a spotlight on youth, not only as filmmakers, but also as film consumers. Hello, my name is David Barrett and I work at the WHO Regional Office for Europe based at UN City here in Copenhagen, Denmark. Now our discussion for the next 30 minutes revolve around the theme film and art as a way to promote health for youth. I am delighted to be joined by our, our panel this afternoon. First of all, uh, Femke van, uh, van Roy, who is the youth delegate representing the Netherlands at the 2021 World Health Assembly. Femke, uh, welcome. Thank you, David. 
Um, um, we are also joined by Mina Stanikic, who is a doctor, a health researcher, epidemiologist, and a film critic, representing the Dutch Global Health Film Festival, and who is now based in Switzerland. Mina, welcome. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be here. And joining us... And joining us from the Republic of Korea is Heijin Kim, who is a film director. And I am uh, very happy to, uh, to repeat the announcement, who is the winner of this year's Student Film Prize at the Health for All Film Festival. Now, I know uh, when it was announced and you were told, wh what, was, uh, what was your reaction? How were you feeling about that? Um, first of all, I was very glad uh, from that uh, news and I was very happy because I can let this news know to the people that are participating in the project, you know, in a film residency, the local people who helped me a lot to make this film. So uh, I am uh, very thankful about this news. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Now, uh, we're going to talk uh, a bit about your film, and I have a whole load of questions uh, about your film. Oh. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but first of all, we're going to uh, watch the film now, and then afterwards, uh, we have questions for you. Hide my bit of hair, Darken. Look to a pack barco. Let our masses dot high. Yos is Kauri. And they am a gorgeous more hunter. Chupas some more more beer. Katitchen no paha. Yes, Tibbin, Nadani. Chadobin, the chamber of hospital. Pon spital, the choy more. Povedn do hajëm lek më mama. Sigur se didi. As njeri nuk të shëron këtu. Ore po pse re kështu do ta lem në vete? Pasaj, unë që ditën për një gjen. Me të vdekur e ema, u bëm me njëherë se mure edhe kjo. Që shë kë bëm? Kë të kjo për një që shë o kështu, që shë o kështu edhe. Pse më vesh.
e foge. Sim, Dias. Oi, mamã. Que mar de leg borge, menos invante. Pô, mir, mãe, mamã, nesse esquema em barulho, a cova me leg te tia, me segurista hospital. Do filho me leg toda ali. E já te fustam? Te fustam na casa mamãe. Do te escorch no hospital ti. Mar tohu? Dhe të shona i pas tani. Unë nuk kam para me gajtë. A të rëndoj i ki dhe do punoj vetë. Po qa kujton ti me gajtë? Se është a shkollaj? Po do pak guash që ranë, dritat, uj, për të ngërën për të pyrë. Dhe pas taj me ndo se o të mbede para për të shkurë në për spitale. Kjo është të pyrë së mundja ime, kjo vend. Kjo jetë, gjdo gjë këtu, unë do i ki. Dhe po të mos ishëm këtu sot, mama e do ishtë ako ma gjallë. Now, I have, oh, as I said before, a whole lot of questions for you about the inspiration for the film and where the idea for the film came from. But I'm going to start from a completely different angle, which is the last shot of the film, which is with the donkey. My, my question with something like that is because um, there's obviously this wonderful metaphor, which is wrapped up in that. In the process of film making, when you have that particular idea, where did that come from? Was that at the start and then you wrapped the story around it? Or was you in, were you in the middle of making the film and you thought, ah, I know how we can end this? Mm. So um, as a matter of fact, I couldn't shoot all the script that I wrote. And uh, we had a very like difficult shooting uh, 
situations, so I couldn't shoot also the, sh the part of the script that I couldn't shoot. Uh, there were some war stories with the donkeys and the main character, and I couldn't shoot that, but even if I couldn't shoot that, I had these images. So, I mean, I pushed a little bit because I really want, wanted this at the ending. And I was still thinking that uh, it could be a metaphor, even if I cannot really uh, go until the end. So, um, um, I don't know, like uh, the, the story itself it, uh, of the area could, could be ended when she fell down. And for me, it was a bit too tragic and too hopeless. So um, I just, as a director, I needed some kind of, I searched for some kind of images that I can save her outside of this uh, very like uh, difficult situation, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know that you were a filmmaker from Korea, but uh, you were yes. studying film in Albania. Is that correct? The, um, actually, I'm studying in uh, Korea uh, at the Korea, yeah, Korean National University of Art. And I'm studying film critics, by the way, <laughs> and, uh, in Albania. Uh, and I'm living in two countries, in France and in Korea. Now I'm studying in Korea, but I'm uh, both. Um, also living in France, and when I was in France, I uh, sh uh, uh, saw this notice, the film residency, Barkan's Gate, and uh, I applied for it, and I, uh, I uh, hope, uh, fortunately, I could participate in the film residency so that I can make this film. Okay. Now, uh, that gets herself into Albania and why you were uh, putting mm -hmm. the story there and uh, why mm -hmm. you were shooting in there. But can I ask what the inspiration was for the film itself? Where did the idea for this come from? Uh, okay. So what we do in a film residency, we need to make one film documentary or film in 10 days. And every year it happens in a different city of Albania. And the last year it was a theory. Uh, and so I made a research, what kind of stories I can speak about, social um, problems and uh, the backgrounds, you know. So I made a research and I found out there is a very big and old uh, oil field uh, uh, just uh, 10 kilometers away from the city Fieri. So, and I also found out that uh, there is a big uh, pollution issue there, oil, soil, oil, and the air. And so these are not really good there, <laughs> the pollution and also the health problem related to that, uh, that uh, pollution. And I also read several like papers, let's say academical stuff to know more about this. And uh, one of the papers explains the headaches which is called Sphalia with a capital C. So I was thinking, yes, it's something very specific. So this is a very like a serious uh, um, headaches, chronic headaches you can have, um, uh, especially if you are uh, if we are working in the oil field. You can have you can you are more likely to have these symptoms. So uh, that's how I uh, was inspired, and yeah. And also I mean, to add a bit, yeah, to add a bit, a little bit more. So I was aware of that uh, the gender inequality about the gender inequality in Albania, even in a generation of youth, you know, very like like me or even younger. So I put like these two things together to to come up with this idea about the film. Filmke. Um... Oh, the, the, the main uh, protagonist within this film is uh, a young woman um, and, I, and, and there are so many, in, in with, captured within the eight minutes of this film, there are so many different themes which have cropped up into it. And Heijin, I know uh, you've already uh, touched on some of them, but for Femke, from, from that generation where it's the protagonist, but also when we're talking about youth and film, when you watch um, uh, Kefalia, thank you. Uh, when you watch a film like that, what kind f for yourself, living in um, a, a place like the Netherlands, what kind of themes resonate most with you? Yeah, I think that uh, environmental pollution and the result from that, that is climate change, is um, something that very much worries everyone and especially younger generations. And uh, luckily, the COVID pandemic has really um, 
um, it has started to change in people's thinking as it has emphasized that the way that we treat our planet um, has serious effects on our health. Um, but unfortunately, some people still feel like climate change will only um, have most of these effects in the future, even though its health implications um, are present right now at this day and age, as is shown by the film. Um, but when with people living in more privileged areas like the Netherlands, um, we don't um, um, experience these issues to the, to the same uh, extent as people in Albania might. And the people who live in the more um, underprivileged areas who are more vulnerable, they often contribute at least to these uh, environmental pollution and to climate change, but they often suffer the most. Um, and that's a great disparity that um, definitely um, gives the viewers some food for thought after watching this film. Mina, you're part of Dutch Global Health Festival. Film Festival um, as well. And I, I, as a film critic and as a theater uh, critic, you've seen, goodness knows, I'm sure hundreds and hundreds of uh, films as well as documentaries and, and shorts uh, such as uh, this one. What kind of impact do these kind of uh, this kind of filmmaking make uh, from your experience? Right. Well, if we're talking about the acceptance of the films, I do think, and I think you would probably agree that fiction films are um, way more popular and acceptable in the general population, and maybe also among the youth, than documentary filmmaking. And in that sense, I would say that with fiction filmmaking, you can probably reach further in the society and um, tackle topics that would be then seen by people that you wouldn't maybe be able to reach with documentary or filmmaking. However, I do have to say that that is changing and the film industry in general is changing with the introduction of the streaming platforms. And Netflix, for example, is the platform where you can see numerous different documentaries, some of them um, tackling the topics of health. And there have been, um, they are watched by people who are usually not really into documentary filmmaking and who would maybe never come to a documentary uh, film festival, but they would watch films on Netflix. Now, speaking of the shorter forms, I think shorter forms in general are accepted as a way to the feature length filmmaking. But if we're talking about youth, I would say that in, in the 21st century, in 2021, youth is, um, accustomed to shorter forms, if we're talking about social media, TikTok, that is all one or and the other form of filmmaking. So in that sense, short forms are essential, I would say, for um, the youth, but not only for the youth. And finally, speaking of fiction shorts, such as the one we have here, um, what, what really resonated for me was the three topics that I have recognized in the film as a health researcher. And one of them is the, as Femke was mentioning, the um, pollution, not just air pollution, but water pollution and so on, and the ignorance of the government um, with regards to the pollution and health. Then second, the um, failure of the health system, which is not equally available apparently to everyone, for example, in Albania, as we were able to see in this film. And then third, the importance of acting early when it comes to all sorts of medical issues. Um, so that were those were the three topics that I have noticed as, as a health professional in Cephalia. Thank you for that. Now, you, you've highlighted a, something I was wanting to ask about, which is in the last several years, we've really moved on to the age of watching films on our mobile devices. Uh, watching films without sound and just using subtitles, but also watching TikTok and and, and now, of course, uh, Twitter and Instagram and uh, and of course YouTube being the the the, the really the introductory uh, platform for something like this. Now, as a filmmaker myself, um, I get put under a lot of pressure to say we want to make a film, but it has to be one minute or less because that's what we have been told the attention span of is of people. Additionally to that, um, and I'm speaking as someone who is of a completely different generation than you, all, all three of you, is that the youth nowadays have, quote unquote, no attention span, so you have to make things short and snappy. So, Heijin, um, as, a, as a, a filmmaker yourself, have you ever been put under pressure or have you thought of we have to keep things really, really short for either this particular market or that's just the way filmmaking is going now? 
um, I'm not that experienced. I uh, don't have so many experiences about filmmaking, but it's true that uh, I mean there are many uh, festivals which I mean uh, let you uh, um, apply for the project less than thir- three minutes, less than one minute, and uh, in this case it was less than eight minutes. So I re- re-edited my film. It, it, <laughs> basically, it was uh, ten minutes, and I, I edited a bit. And it was not uh, a total difference. There is not a, so much difference, but still two minutes less. So yeah, it's a kind of true. But I mean, this is a limit. But at the same time, you can you need to um, make another storytelling in the limited times, and it's challenging. But at the same time, um, you can create something, something you know, in the limited times, and uh, to be uh, to to be able to be shown in. Uh, to the large audience, I guess. <laughs> Febke, um, as uh, the youth, uh, youth delegate going to the World Health Assembly, but also as somebody who enjoys filmmaking, is it fair what I said that youth, and I'm using that term very sort of broadly, um, have a limited attention span and we should be making our films shorter and shorter? Well, I have to disagree with the fact that youth have an attention span of only one minute. But I do agree with the point you make that um, if you want to reach youth, you have to use the, the way they communicate and the tools they use uh, for communication. Um, so that means putting films on YouTube or uh, TikTok. Um, but then again, if you want to tackle a very extensive health problem, one minute isn't enough to capture the problem. So you can maybe extend it to a couple of more minutes or a, um, a longer film. Um, so yeah. Before we move on to uh, the next film, hey Jen, with uh, this film, uh, do you have any future plans for it? Um, I am now writing a new script, and yes, I mean this is just a pre-production stage, and uh, it is something. The subject is more personal and stories with what I have been through. So. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, I cannot really mention more about this uh, at the for the moment. But uh, yes, I'm working on this. Fantastic. Well, I'm certainly looking forward Thank to you. it. Um, I would like to move on uh, to uh, the second film that we're uh, discussing today, and we're going to change the subject matter on this uh, just slightly and move from the filmmaking, but more to the influence of uh, film and, um, and the arts itself on health. Mm-hmm. And this is a film which is, uh, was produced by the uh, World Health Organization Regional Office for Europe. And it's about a young woman in Sweden, um, Celia, and she has lived with schizophrenia for as long as she can remember. And she hears uh, sounds that... Uh, that don't exist, like people uh, um, opening and closing doors um, and, um, uh, and knocking on the door when there's no one there. Now, when a psychologist suggested that art might help, it transform- transformed her life. Now, this short film is titled Arts and Health Stories, Celia. This is Celia Marie Ros. Och jag har PTSD, DID och schizofreni. Och schizofreni är att du följer ser ting och hör ting som egentligen inte är där. Mm, det är inte så enkelt att leva med det, men schizofreni har jag levt med så länge jag kan huska. Jag hör ting egentligen ganska ofta. Jag hör ju folk banka på dörrar och sånt. Och så går jag till dörren så är det ingen där, så blir jag så nervös för om de har redan kommit in eller jag blir så nervös för. Jag snackat med en psykolog som sa att kunst kan hjälpa mot all angst och all som stämmer och som du kan få att du följer bättre. Kunsten min, da, det är en ganska stor del av det jag ser och av de stämmen. Det blir en form av en karaktär som jag målar. Det blir som att jag har något ett bild på de stämmen jag hör. Jag ser en liten jente som är ni runt 89. Hon bestämmer sig inte hur gammal hon är, men hon är runt här. Hon ser egentligen sån ut, både med blåor i ansiktet och 
Svart hår og tomt, eller sint blikk, eller hva jeg skal si. Jeg ville anbefalt for alle å begynne med kunst, fordi kunst er en måte du kan frigjøre alle de all den angsten man har. Kunst og maling har hjulpet meg til å at familie og venner kan bli bedre kjent med meg, at de skjønner litt mer hva jeg går gjennom. For det er egentlig den eneste måten jeg kan uttrykke meg selv, som jeg vet om. Det er så fall verdens berømt at det er skrik, da. Jeg tror mest om alleriet handler om angst for de to som står bak det. Ja, det virker ut som det. Men det løper fra de to der som enda har gjort det man har gjort enda nå, kanskje, på en eller annen måte. Er det det du tenker? Ja. Det er liksom ingen regler for kunst. Du kan lage hva du vil. Kunst har gitt meg et språk og har gjort meg veldig selvstendig i forhold til det jeg var før. Og kunst har gitt meg veldig mye glede i livet. So, um, I hope you have had an opportunity uh, to see this film. And Mina, I'm going to come over to you um, as, as, uh, as, as I say, as a doctor, as a health researcher, epidemiologist, but also from the point of view of filmmaking. This kind of filmmaking, as it's sort of juxtaposed against what we saw with uh, Agent's film, this being more a documentary or more a biography of an individual. Does this kind of filmmaking tell a, tell a story that needs to be told? Um, and do you think this kind of filmmaking has impact in uh, changing people's perceptions of health? Absolutely. This is kind of a film that has its place. It's very short, but it's very informative. It tells us about a whole transformed life. And it also informs us as spectators about how it is to live with schizophrenia and also about the power of art. And in that sense, there is something meta-artistic, so to say, in this film, because we're watching the power of art, which is then told through the power of film as art. And I would, I would actually also go back to what... Oh, sorry, we had a delay. I would, I would also like to go back to what Femke was saying um, about the length of the films and about the attention span and so on, I would say that also youth needs some sort of a education to build their watching experience and to build themselves as spectators. And it is absolutely fine if the attention span is low and if we start with shorter forms and as we grow old, we easily can prolong them. Um, and the topic of the film that we have just seen could be told as well as a, as a feature length story. And there are so, film offers numerous ways to, to tell one story and they're all equally important, I would say. So this short film is probably as important as a feature length film on the same topic would be. Uh, Femke, you are a medical student. Um, has, it, has the topic of arts impacting health uh, ever been raised uh, through your education thus far, or has that ev ever been discussed? I have to say that um, using art in order to um, promote health has very marginally been addressed during uh, our medical education in the Netherlands. So when I watched this film, I came to the realization that even though art has proven to be very effective in treating both physical and mental problems, in my experience, actually very few um, practicing uh, healthcare professionals actually actively suggest their patients to participate in arts, um, even though it's proven to be effective. So I think we need to uh, strengthen its place as being a credible um, additional treatment and films like this will help in doing so. 
we have a whole s uh, series of uh, these short films about arts and health. And I was hoping we actually had one which explored filmmaking uh, per se. But um, um, I, I've heard this wonderful story, actually one we haven't made yet, which we would love to make, which was about a choir who have breathing difficulties. So they, they, the doctors told them, you should join this choir because it helps practice uh, with, uh, with your lungs. And then it also brings people together as part of a community. Hey, Jen, as far as when you are uh, going through the process of filmmaking, obviously there's the artistic side to it, but do you find there are, for lack of a, uh, a I was trying to find a fancy way of saying this, but it's actually, are there health benefits for you as an individual when you are exploring art such as filmmaking? Oh, this is a difficult subject. I have never thought about this. Yes, but uh, while listening to your question, yes, I think, yes, it is. I have a benefit because I am. I don't have a serious, very serious health um, problems. Yes, I, I. I can say that I. Uh, I am. Yes, I have some kind of benefits about that. I mean, on filmmaking and. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I'm. If my answer is uh, um, good enough. <laughs> Uh, of course, you're, uh, everybody's answer is, is yes. great. No, I, I'm, I'm curious because I know for myself as an artist, whether uh, it's creating a film or playing a piano, okay. um, sometimes people say, why do you play the piano? And it's like, it's for my head, it's for my mental health. Oh, it's, yeah, helps okay. Me. Mm -mm. Okay, yes. But I mean, even if I don't have some very like serious disease, but um, I mentioned about my, uh, my uh, next project, I am in uh, script writing. And I said to you um, that it is very personal. Uh, it was, it, it is about my personal and emotional and a bit uh, traumatic uh, experience that I have been through. And uh, by writing the, the script, actually I felt like it cures me a lot. I mean, I faced the, the memory that I had before and in a way, I mean, I uh, let something go from deep inside of me and uh, yeah, I mean, the health is, doesn't need to be like a very like a serious and, uh, you know, in a level of disease, you know, like uh, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Mina, um, when we are looking at all of uh, these different subject matters, I know when I am trying to make a video at the World Health Organization and people come to me and say we need to make a video, my first thought is what do you want people to do after they have seen this video? Right? Communication is about changing attitudes and, and changing impact. Uh, but I was thinking about this earlier and thinking, am I overthinking it? For you as both a film critic and a theater critic and who enjoys the, those, those arts, what is it that you want to get from a film or get from a theater production? Is it uh, uh, you want to learn something and, and, and change that or is it more just more emotive than mm -hmm. that? I want to feel. I think that's crucial. Having the sort of the emotional relationship between, for example, your protagonist and the audience is crucial for your audience to start caring about your protagonist and to start caring for the story your protagonist is telling. Um, if you manage to make your audience care about your protagonist, about the problems you're depicting in your film, you're also going to be able to change at least thinking, if not behavior of your audience. I would say. And there is one thing that you mentioned and you said, I'm not sure whether I'm uh, overthinking. I wouldn't say so. I think that um, when you're creating a piece of art, it needs to be really thought through. And sometimes, yes, you can rely on your gut feeling, but if you want to really communicate and to um, resonate to your audience, then you really need to, to think it through. 
Thank you for that. Uh, hey, Jen, I'm going to throw it right back over to you because we're talking about the filmmaking process. Uh, let's say Femke here is decided, nope, she wants to now get into filmmaking because she's so inspired by this conversation. Uh, as, uh, as somebody who is entering the filmmaking, maybe as a student a filmmaker themselves, what advice would you want to give them? Okay, um, as I told you before, I am not that experienced filmmaker. But I, but I has been a film lover for a long time, but it took me so many years that I have this idea that I can make a film. Because I was thinking that, I mean, somebody who is, uh, is very creative or talented can do that. Not me, but actually if you uh, express something and if you are interested in sub subject and it, you feel very passionate, about this, then uh, you are already ready, I, I guess. And I mean, these days, nowadays, you can access very easily the camera, which is uh, affordable enough and the software, and uh, you can learn from many like platforms and including YouTube. So, I mean, just go for it and you will have something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Femke, from the, the audience perspective, on that. If uh, a, a friend came to you or a colleague came to you and said, I want to make some filmmaking, from your perspective as an audience member, what advice would you want to give them? Um, I would want to give them the advice that when you're making a film, it's mostly about conveying the emotions and telling the story to the people, um, because that's what I think is the added value of making films, apart from just giving people facts and figures. Um, once you tell a story and get close to people and their homes, their families, and their lives, you're able to um, uh, learn the people who view it uh, to be compassionate. And that will uh, eventually result in a positive change in the people who watch the film. And I think that's an excellent uh, uh, place to end our conversation uh, this afternoon. I would very much like to thank our panel, uh, Femke and Ahijin and Nina. And to you, our audience, be sure to check out all of the films at this year's festival at the WHO website. And all of the films are also available on the WHO YouTube channel. And so for myself at the WHO regional office uh, for, of Europe in Copenhagen, Denmark, um, and on behalf of all of the panel, thank you very, very much and have a very good afternoon. Thank you. I draw as a way of imagining my mental health rather than mental illness. My name is Bill Doan. I'm an author, an educator, and a solo performance artist. I've been an associate dean at a large I've research university across the globe. Spent a year as the president educator, of the association. I was even inducted into the education. College of Fellows of the and American solo Theater. My name is Bill Doan. From all outward appearances, I was a confident, self-possessed person. But inside, inside, I was I slowly, was slowly dying. dying. Like most people with anxiety and depression, I learned how to keep my secret. I thought the problem was me. I was different and not good enough. I was weird. As I got older, I felt angry. It got harder and harder to keep my secret. When it was time to come out of hiding, I didn't know how. So I started drawing. So I started drawing. The images captured how I was feeling much better than any words I tried to use. 
after three years of making work, I felt a growing sense that I might actually come apart at the seams. Once I understood how good drawing makes me feel, I became intentional about drawing. I draw every day, and sometimes I'll just simply draw what I see. Birds, flowers, landscapes, people, myself, to stay grounded in the here and now. Inhale, exhale, breathe. Now draw. Drawing can provide just the distraction your brain needs. So grab a pencil, a pen, a crayon, a piece of chalk, anything you can make a mark with. And then find some paper, any paper. Draw things you can see in the room. Draw things you see outside your window. Use more than one of the tools that you've picked up and make marks. Doodle, scribble, draw for at least 10 or 15 minutes. And don't worry what it looks like. Just do it. Your brain will thank you. Hmm. Oui, je t'ai mis une robe comme d'habitude. Hein. Oh, oh c'est vous qui avez refait mon lit, je, je devais le refaire. Oui. Hein? Tiens, allez. Allez. Hop là. Hé Vas-y, donne. Attention, attention, regardez qui arrive. Hein. Papa, tu vas m'inscrire à la cantine, du coup, il faut pas que tu oublies, hein. <rire> mais non, mais j'oublie jamais. <rire> tu veux pas une tresse comme Elsa Non, mais je trouve pas de certaine assortie ma, à ma robe. Oh, bah si, regarde. Non, mais le bleu, même. Oui, mais ça va, hein. Il y a le bleu, c'est bon. Bon, c'est bon. C'est pas bien grave. Ouais, c'est pas grave. Toutes les couleurs sont dans la nature, tout se mélange. Quelle aventure Jamais de ma vie j'aurais cru qu'on allait peindre sur ma tête. J'espère que je vais pas abîmer le. Ouais. Wouh Wouh <rire> Alors, là c'est le moment fatidique. Je me cache quand même un petit peu. Hein. Hop Et hop C'est bon Oui. Voilà. Et bien, tu peux servir tes doigts. Moi, tu peux rentrer un peu si tu as envie de rentrer un peu. Non. Comme ça. Non, comme ça. Tu sais, parce que vu que ta main, tu la mets dans en fait, ça. Ça aplatit. Voilà, voilà, comme ça. Oui, voilà. C'est mieux. Oui. Comme ça, bien, bien, bien mets les doigts. Ouais. Voilà, N'appuie pas trop non plus, oui. parce que sinon, ça fait. Voilà. Et baisse, tu les pousses bien vers le. En fait, ça là. 
Ouais, c'est bon là Ouais, mais détends-toi. Et essaye de, de te tourner. Non, nous, on va changer un peu juste pour la caméra après. Ouais, ouais là, c'est normal. Euh... Juste, il faut juste que tu relâches un peu tes mains. Parce voilà, t'es un peu. Et retourne-toi voilà. encore un tout petit peu. Sauf bien. Et après, tu, bah, tu lèves la tête. T'es bien dans ta peau, t'es bien dans ton corps. C'est beau là ouais. Tourne un tout petit peu ta tête vers moi. Je me sens femme à cet instant. Toute ma vie, je me suis dit que j'étais à ma mère. Ah, J'aurais trop aimé être un homme. Et finalement, aujourd'hui, tu vois, avec ce qui m'arrive, eh ben, je me sens bien dans ma peau de femme. Et, euh, et voilà, le cancer du sein, ça représente bien euh, ben, la féminité. Et tu vois, ça m'arrive à moi aujourd'hui. Et, et à croire que c'est un message, tu vois. Je sais pas comment je dois le prendre. Mais maintenant, là, je me sens belle. Je, casse ma, je cache ma poitrine. La féminité. Tu vois, donner la vie. La beauté. Tu vas faire des fleurs sur, sur sa tête. C'est cool quand même d'être une femme. Donner la vie, ouais. Ça, c'est beau. C'est la. Je crois que c'est la plus belle chose qui ait pu m'arriver dans ma vie. Et là aujourd'hui, j'ai envie de représenter encore plus cette féminité. On a de la chance quand même d'être. Et j'ai donné naissance à deux filles. Femme, femme, femme. Girl power, les filles. Et même si demain, on venait à m'enlever ce, ce sein, je pense que je serais quand même belle. Et femme. Tu vois, des fois, je me prépare à peut-être faire le deuil d'une de, partie de moi. On verra bien. Pour l'instant, il est là. Et... J'en profite. Parce que dans la vie, il faut profiter finalement de tout ce que de tout ce qu'on a. Parce que à tout moment, on peut perdre. Ça fait partie de la vie. Mais ma vie, elle est belle. Donc là, je me sens bien. C'est cool. Can you hear that? Silence is the most beautiful thing that exists in the universe. Silence is my only solace up here, 70 miles above the surface of the earth. Up here I'm always contemplating, constellating my thoughts. 
Here I get to live out my childhood dreams of floating among the stars, witnessing the poetry of the universe. Breathtaking. On that note, my oxygen supply is the only thing preventing this suit from becoming a custom-built coffin. So much space before me, and yet so little in this suit. Sometimes I feel like I'm suffocating in this prison, but it's all worth it for this view. Even when I'm back on Earth, I still find myself staring at the stars, diamonds twinkling away in the night sky, always out of reach. It's so beautiful. There are no walls in space, no confines, no boundaries, and of course, no sound. Only the universe and the quiet. When I was a child, I would look up into the night sky and observe the stars. I remember my favorite constellation was Gemini, because I shared this star sign with my brother. I steal a glance at the Earth. It reminds me of a globe I've seen before. It reminds me of him. He wasn't exactly the typical kind of guy. He described himself as sort of a Robin Hood, except he never actually gave back to the poor. I knew what he was up to. I'd always turn a blind eye to it. I shouldn't have. He became very good at what he did. Fairly well seasoned. After each of his exploits, he'd regale me with stories of what he had done, the treasures he had taken. I was too caught up in the pursuit of my own dreams to advise him otherwise. He wanted to reach for diamonds. I wanted to reach for the stars. Literally. My memory isn't the best. And yet I can't seem to forget what happened to my brother. The events of that fateful day, so long ago. Crystal clear. This is what he told me. I had woken up hungry. I sat in my bed, listening to the noises outside. It was raining that morning. Pouring, actually. After breakfast, I got ready. That night, or should I say morning, I planned to pay a visit to a lovely old man who lived not far from me. A jeweler by trade, he obviously had an affinity for them. But there was no way anyone could appreciate diamonds as much as I. It was my lucky day. An open window on the second floor. My speciality. I invited myself inside, and that's when I saw them. Diamonds. They stared at me as they twinkled in the moonlight. In that moment, I must have spaced out. All it took was one small step for everything to go wrong. I had not noticed a metal globe on the shelf. I don't know how I knocked it over. But that is when my whole world came crashing down. And just like that, the silence I so relied on was shattered. The quiet, gone. I'd woken someone up. I still remember his gaunt face, wide-eyed and terrified as he saw me. A crowbar gripped tightly in his hands. And then he attacked. I didn't mean to do it. I would never intentionally assault anyone, not for the world. But as the adrenaline surged in my veins, something came over me. I picked up the globe and swung. I can't remember if I heard his scream or mine. But the next thing I knew was just that awful quiet. I knew it would be bars for me when I saw the red and blue lights flashing through the window. It truly was 
self-defense. But the court didn't see it that way. He was put away for a long time. Prison was not kind. I tried to cast my mind back to my childhood, searching for memories of playing with my brother back home. I tried to remember scampering down hallways, playing in cardboard boxes, and pretending that we were flying through the cosmos. I searched the recesses of my mind for corridors filled with noise and laughter. But all I can remember is silence. My mind is a funny thing. I think it tries to protect me from my past. But every now and then, I remember everything. When I was a child, I would look up into the night sky and observe the stars. I remember that my favorite constellation was Gemini, because I needed to keep alive the memory of my twin brother, who died at birth. I hate that he left me alone. Silence is the most terrifying thing that exists in the universe. 